Over the past couple of years, contemporary Korean media and cinema has seen an immense rise and surge in global popularity, ranging from the groundbreaking Academy Award-winning 2019 film Parasite to the recent hit Netflix show Squid Game from just this past year. One of the common through lines throughout contemporary Korean cinema is a utilization of overt, explicit social commentary and critique through their narratives. From the critique of social divides and classism within the diegesis of films such as Bong Joon-ho's Parasite and Lee Chang-dong's 2018 masterpiece Burning, to the outright blatant and conspicuous commentary on capitalism and the brutally competitive nature of modern society within Netflix's Squid Game, Korean filmmakers and auteurs have frequently used cinema as a means to explicitly critique and discuss social themes and issues. Even as far back as its genesis 100 years ago, Korean cinema was deeply influenced and shaped by social themes at the time, mainly the extensive nature of Japanese colonialism during the early 20th century, and how that permeated early Korean films via storytelling tropes, censorship, and popular sentiments and movements, especially within films from renowned Korean actor and filmmaker Na Woon Gyu. The first film that truly exemplifies the historical use of cinema in order to elucidate problematic social issues and themes regarding Japanese colonialism is Na Eun-gyu's 1926 film Arirang, which also happens to be one of the most influential and renowned films in Korean history. Often cited as Korea's first nationalist film, Arirang chronicles the story of a young man named Yongjin, who becomes mentally ill after being imprisoned and abused by the Japanese police for his participation in the March 1st, 1919 protest against the Japanese occupation of Korea. After he is released back to his family, Yongjin sees Oh Giho, a known collaborator with the Japanese police, attempting to rape his sister, Yonghui. In a fit propelled by his mental illness, he ends up murdering Giho and is consequently arrested by the Japanese police. This particular narrative depicts the Japanese police as immensely corrupt and oppressive, notably traumatizing and torturing a young Korean man for participating in the March 1st or the Samil movement. The film's unsavory and negative depiction of Oh Giho, a Korean man who works with the Japanese police and attempts to rape Yonghee, also effectively criticizes those who may sympathize with the Japanese occupation of Korea at the time. And by having Yongjin arrested once again at the end of the film by the Japanese police, director Na Eun Gyu highlights and emphasizes the inherent perpetual tragedy, corruption, and oppression behind Japan's historical occupation of Korea. Ultimately, Arirang utilizes its politicized, nationalistic narrative to elucidate the problematic nature of Japanese colonialism. The second film from Korean filmmaker Na Eun Gyu that also explicitly evokes sentiments of social commentary and critique against Japanese occupation is the 1927 film Tulchui. Within this particular film, a young couple, who promise to marry each other, are abruptly separated when the woman is forced into marriage with a rich gangster. A heroic man, called Tuljui, or Field Mouse, fights for justice by halting the wedding, killing the oppressive gangsters, and returning the bride to her beloved. Upon the release of this film back in 1927, the Japanese authorities notably banned the film due to the overtly symbolic nature of the otherwise remarkably simplistic narrative. As the rich gangsters represented the Japanese colonialists, the groom represented the Korean nation, and the stolen bride represented the liberty that was taken by the Japanese through the colonization of Korea. Thus, Na Eun Gyu's 1927 film, Tuljui, evidently echoes sentiments of social commentary and criticism against Japan's occupation and colonization of Korea in the early 20th century. Within Inje Omnun Naritbe, or The Ownerless Ferry Boat, from director Lee Kyu Hwan, and of course starring Na Eun Gyu, the film concerns a farmer named Susam, who works as a ferry boat operator in a small Korean village where he lives with his wife and daughter. When a bridge is constructed, Susam ends up losing his job, a catastrophic event which is only made worse by the fact that the bridge engineer then tries to rape his daughter. Utterly enraged, Susam brings an axe to the bridge and attempts to destroy it, only to be hit and killed by an oncoming train. What stands out most in this film, however, is this final scene, which interestingly ended up being outright censored and omitted by the Japanese government. The reason for the censorship was detailed in Lee Young-il's 1988 book, the history of Korean cinema, which posits that to axe the bridge was to describe the anger of the Korean people against the Japanese occupation. Therefore, Lee Kyu Han and Na Eun Gyu's 1932 film, In Jae Om the Narutbe, or The Ownerless Ferry Boat, acts as a much more poetic critique and commentary against Japan's occupation of Korea in the early 20th century, using the evocative symbol of an axe and a bridge 
to effectively epitomize all the contempt, dissent, and hatred from the Korean people against the oppression of Japanese colonialism. From the nationalistic, anti-colonialist, and politicized films from Korean filmmaker and actor Na Eun Gyu, such as Arirang, Dulchui, and Im Jae Om the Narutbe, all the way to the works of contemporary Korean cinema such as The Handmaiden, Burning, Parasite, and Squid Game, Korean films have always seemed to possess an inclination towards conveying critiques and commentaries on problematic and pressing social issues, perhaps attempting to overtly provoke social change and awareness, to, as Caesar A. Cruz once put it, disturb the comfortable.